Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's episode of Thank You For Coming. I am your host, Mike Carr, and it is an honor to have you here. Thank you so much for coming here. Hello, uh, Radish Brett. I love the way, like, knowing who you are, but saying your name in a fun way. Radish Brett is fun. Uh, hello, Grimster27. Booyah, indeed. Loaf, thank you for coming. Loaf the Wonder Bread. Um, yeah, I, we are very excited to have you here. Uh, if you're tuning in for the very first time, I have some bad news for you. This will also be the very last time you're tuning in. Um, so what were you waiting for? Uh, no, but um, this is the final episode, the series finale, as they say, um, of Thank You For Coming. Um, so all questions will be answered by the end of this episode. You'll know everything you've been wondering about. Um, I thought I would start the show by spoiling uh, some, some, some television series that have already concluded from the past. So if you haven't seen these shows by now, um, that's on you because I'm about to spoil some television shows. Number one, Quantum Leap. Uh, Sam Beckett never returns home. In fact, he goes back and helps Al. Um, Al, who is his hologram, he helps him find, go back to his first love, which then saves his whole life. And then Sam goes on leaping and he never gets home. That's a bummer of an ending, but it happened. Uh, the Sopranos. Uh, Tony Soprano gets shot in a bathroom. At least we think he does because it goes to black, I think. I didn't watch that one. Um, Six Feet Under, uh, classic show on HBO from many years ago. Six Feet Under, it's a show about a funeral home. Um, everybody dies. At the very, you know, they show their end. It's very emotional after Claire moves to New York. Um, let's see, what show? Oh, I'm getting asked to not spoil um, the most recent uh, ep season of The Great British Break Off. Okay, um, I won't because I don't know, I have not seen it either. So I will not spoil that for you. Um, but you know what I am going to spoil for you? Uh, Breaking Bad. Yeah, because uh, he <laughs> it ended badly for him. It, it, he broke badly at the very end. You you know, you, you take from that what you will. Jesse gets away, though. So <laughs> you have no interest in Breaking Bad. Well, you're lucky because I just spoiled it for you. Now you don't have to watch it, so you're totally fine. Um, let's see. I'm going to spoil one more show. Um, and that show is uh, The Smurfs. There was an animated series of The Smurfs uh, in the in the 80s. And it ended, uh, they actually went to Gargamel's castle and they grabbed him and they tied him up. They rolled him in a carpet and then they threw him off a bridge. And that was the end of The Smurfs. It was a really dark ending for these adorable little blue characters. That one's not true. Um, but what is true is <laughs> I can see the face of one of my guests like, what? Don't worry, The Smurfs are fine. Um, uh, you do have interest in Brian Cranston. Okay, um, funny story before I bring my guests on. It's my final show. Um, I saw him in an airport once uh, in London's Heathrow Airport. And I was trying to, uh, my wife and I were running to catch our plane. We ran past him, Brian Cranston, and we knew that he was going to the same flight because our flight was going to New York. So as we're going up the escalator, I yelled to Brian Cranston, you going to New York? And he said, yeah. And I went, it's this way. So we get there, we're sweating, we ran. We're in the line for coach. There's a nice first class line right here with nobody in it because they're already on the plane. So Brian Cranston then comes strolling by, looks at us and goes, you made it. And then walked on the plane. So uh, that was my, that's my Brian Cranston story. Um, he's the one, he was very kind to, didn't invite us to first class to hang out, which I thought he would have, but whatever. Uh, anyway, enough of me rambling. I want to bring out my very special guests. <laughs> um, you're welcome. Uh, that was one of many celebrity sightings on that trip. Um, I'm going to bring out my guests for the final episode tonight. Two improvisers who've never met, and they're going to play together. First, uh, I'm going to bring out uh, a, a wonderful improviser from here in Orlando, Florida. Um, she has performed at SAC Comedy Lab. She's performed at dozens of shows at the Orlando Fringe Festival. Um, very talented. Please welcome Tony Bonacorso. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Tony. Welcome to the show. Nah, thanks for having me. Of course. I like the, yeah. is that a painting of an orange behind your head? It looks uh, like an orange slice. Uh, specifically a grapefruit right a next grapefruit. to a queen having some tea. Oh, very Why nice. Not? Yeah. Yeah. Some eclectic art behind you. That is fantastic. Thank you. Excellent. Thank well, you I'm for bring calling it your, eclectic. I, I, I know four like smart sounding words and I throw them out whenever <laughs> I get a chance. Um, yeah. So our next guest uh, who's going to be joining you, your scene partner tonight, another a wonderful improviser. Uh, I've seen her across the stages at Improv Boston, and you've probably seen her here on 
uh, 2MB Studios, if you're a fan of, well, if you're a fan of QEW, if you're a fan of the Great British Bake Off, if you're a fan of, I believe, Sleepover as well, um, I think you are about to see the face of 2MB Studios. It's Cat Grimm. Hello. And Loaf. And Loaf, the true face of 2MB Studios. I can't <laughs> say that I'm the face of 2MB. <laughs> But you, but you have given you you have you brought loaf into the world and gave loaf to us in such a wonderful way. <laughs> How are you, Cat? Doing well. Uh, too hot. It is warm too hot. here in Boston. I do not envy y'all Floridians for constant heat. <laughs> uh, the AC has been running today. Oh yeah, yeah. No shame in that game. No shame no. in that game. Mm -mm. Yeah, I, Tony. How do you run your? Like, I run my AC when like the when the thermometer breaks like 75 I'm like oh air conditioner time oh yeah absolutely not not yeah. above that ever yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh tony and kat introduce yourselves to each other welcome to the show <laughs> hello kat i'm tony <laughs> hi tony i'm kat oh wow I what a joy <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah, so I'm so excited to have you both on the show tonight because you're both such fun. You're both improvisers uh, that bring so much joy and brightness to the stage when you play. Um, and you both have such great energy and great positivity. And I thought this is going to be too much positivity for the world. And that's what the world needs right now. So we're bringing it. Um, so this is the part of the show where we get to know each other a little bit because I know the both of you, but you do not know each other. So uh, I have a, f a couple of, uh, of silly icebreaker questions uh, just to kind of get to know each other. So uh, the first question, actually, it's inspired by the story I told. And I'm curious, um, do you have a story of a celebrity sighting in your life and what was it like? Because uh, I told my story about Brian Cranston in the airport. Do either of you have celeb like a time where you saw a celebrity and did you follow up and say something or not? Or how would it go? Kat, you seem to have something. So please. I, I do only because it's oddly similar to yours, but much less exciting. Um, <laughs> so for those who have watched the TV show Bones, um, there's the, Bones' father is Max Keenan. I'm literally, I had to look it up because it's been so long, um, who is played by a Ryan O'Neill. And I was once on an airplane with Ryan O'Neill. Um, and I only learned this as I was filing to my seat in the back of the airplane and happened to catch him out of the corner of my eye when he was sitting at the front of the airplane. Um, I did not say or do anything. Um, and it also was very brief because I was just focused on not holding up the people behind me. But that actually might be the only famous, famous person I've ever been in close proximity to ever. Ah, oh, that's fun. Ryan O'Neill is a famous, he's a famous, famous actor. Love Story from the 70s is like a big Ryan O'Neill movie. So cool. Tony, how about you? Any celebrity encounters? I, I guess I've lived a very sheltered life. I have nothing <laughs> coming to me at all. I think the closest I've ever been to a, a celebrity in the city. <laughs> it was like I was in New York one time and Edward Norton was filming something. So he was like walking. And that was it. Like they were filming him walking in the street. And I was like, that's Edward Norton. All right, let's get pizza. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that counts. I think that counts. Does it? Does it? <laughs> it totally counts. Because he probably knew you were, he felt your energy and you're like, oh, he's going, he's stalking around. Very yeah, nice. He's uh, pretty serious. <laughs> yeah, he's always a very serious dude, I've heard. Oh, on yeah. a plane with Kristen Dunst, waited in line for the bathroom. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's neat. That's a, <laughs> that's a, that's a great opportunity to start a conversation right there when you're waiting in line for the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> they like your let <laughs> like your let's get let's get pizza. <laughs> All right, so this is a question. This hit me. I thought this was an interesting question. When was the last time you did something for the first time? I also have a very quick answer for this. All right. Um, <laughs> so I recently changed jobs. Um, so this was the, the first time I interviewed for jobs after graduating, after getting my first job after college. So that, so the last time was when I was interviewing, uh, for new positions. Wow. What was that like? Like, did you remember like, were, were you, cause I remember my first job interview after college, I was super nervous. Were you nervous again? Like, what was the what would it feel like? It was 
a roller coaster because um, I've been previously at my or previous position for about seven years. So like that's a long time to be at a place um, without, you know, interviewing or like seeing how the landscape was really. So it was my very first position that I interviewed for. I like I was oddly nervous and like prepared so much for it. Um, but then like as I did subsequent interviews, I was like, you know what, I'm just doing this. Um, and if it works out, it works out. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. So I'm just going to go into it as being me and trying not to be nervous about it. So it was a good <laughs> learning experience overall. Uh, <laughs> Very cool. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Tony, do you, do you have an answer for the last time you did something for the first time? Um, <laughs> I guess like the first thing that's coming to my mind is I recently put up wallpaper for the first time and I know I won't ever do that again. <laughs> Um, I, it turned out great. I did my best, but I hated every six hours that it took me. <laughs> I hated every minute of it. It's so nerve wracking. <laughs> it was stressful. I was so sweaty. Was it a patterned yeah. wallpaper or like a neutral color? Like, did you have to match anything? Oh, I had up? to match it. Oh. And it would, if it's lightly, you know, got a little off track, panic, panic. Um, that's it. <laughs> I didn't know how much glue to use. It wasn't very, the, the instructions weren't as thorough as I'd like them to be. Like, mm -hmm. should it be squishy? Should it be barely there? That would have been helpful, but you know, it's done. So why, wall, why wallpaper and not paint? Was it because you really liked the pattern that you saw? I really liked the pattern. I wanted something dynamic for my office. Um, I'm wondering, I like what, uh, I, I wonder like as soon as I sell this house, if one person will be like, ugh, that's gotta go, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I guess if you, that's usually what happens with all paper. If anyone does, you don't sell to that person. You're like, no. Okay. <laughs> no. Do you know how hard this was for me? I'll judge them. Yeah, it's, it's in the so contract. Hard. You have to leave the wallpaper. <laughs> you have to leave the wallpaper. I'll, I come back and check. Yeah, Absolutely. that's part of the life. <laughs> <laughs> um, I asked each of you to prep a question for each other um, for this get to know you. So, Kat, um, please, uh, if you have a question for Tony, please ask the question. I do. Tony. What is a mundane fact about yourself or your daily routine? Oh, a mundane a, fact. A simple oh. fact. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> about my routine? Like what I do every day? Yeah, or just about yourself. Okay. A simple fact about myself. Um, I make really good fake fart noises. Okay. I have a couple of follow-up questions. Am I allowed to ask? Oh, please. Yes, yes. Um, um, what prompted you developing this skill? And how frequently do you use this skill? <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I kind of just fell into it. Um, as, as a kid, I really enjoyed farts. I was very, very, uh, you know, alone in that. <laughs> Um, and I just discovered I could make them make a really convincing fart noises, fart noise. Um, and I put it on my resume, on my theater resume. It's been there since I was a teenager. Not once has someone asked me to perform that. Are you serious? And I want, yeah, I really want it to happen one day, but it's there. It's at, it's the first thing that's written. I put realistic flatulence noises to make my sound sound a little more upper class, you know? Sure. Yeah. That's a great test to see who's reading your resume because any really director good. worth their no salt who reads that is going to be like, like, all right, um, <laughs> the, the, the chat is waiting. So, uh, Tony, uh, if you don't, right. if you don't mind. No, absolutely. All right. <clears throat> I hope this, I hope this works with the, with the mic, the mics on my ears. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's the dynamic range that you achieve too. It's not just like <laughs> one constant. It's like you had, you know, slightly faster, slower. I don't know how you quantify it, but. Mm. Yeah, I practice wow. a lot. I've tried to like <laughs> hone in on the different kinds of farts, you know, like wet or hard or <laughs> airy or, you know. I am deeply offended that that hasn't come up in an audition. I, I am too. <laughs> oh my God. That, 
what that those were violently realistic um thank you <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> Um, so, uh, Tony, uh, what is your question for Kat? And is it fart related? Um, <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> not. <laughs> um, so I like that you call this the positive people. So I'll, I'll ask a positive question. What was the worst job you ever had and what made it so horrible? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and I just changed jobs too. So oh. <laughs> should I say it's my last job? Um, you know, I'm... I don't, I've been really fortunate to have a lot of jobs over my time that, um, over my career that like overall have been pretty great um, and good. I, I'll say, um, I'll answer the spirit of the question. Okay. Uh, it's, so I don't consider it the worst job, but I was a uh, penguin husbandry intern at the Mystic Aquarium uh, for a summer. and. It was great and a really great learning experience. The worst part of it was I learned after doing that that penguin husbandry was not for me, which had been a previous goal in my career for quite some time. Wow. So the dis sort of the disappointment in learning that my personal attributes were not a great fit for that sort of position was a little disappointing. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, I can imagine. That's a big shift. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm in biochemistry, so a little bit of a different uh, field. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm so happy that you found your way. <laughs> <laughs> As am I. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, it is now time to get Kat and Tony improvising. So in the chat, please give us a location where a two-person scene can take place. Uh, and the two of them will improvise a scene in that location. Uh, they will start the scene with the line, thank you for coming, and then the scene will go on. Uh, so please, uh, location, location, location. Um, that is uh, what we're waiting for in the chat. Um, so yeah, uh, so this is the final episode of the show, and we've had so many great locations. Um, and every one of the pairings I have said, and I feel like I'm going to say this again, is that is going to be a show that we're going to see down the road at a festival somewhere. Oh, like, wow. Like Pressure's I, I on. May, well, I may, just, I may just do the Thank You for Coming Fest and make everybody do duos, um, which would be a lot of fun. Okay, I love this. Uh, the two of you are at a barber, barbershop quartet show. Um, <laughs> however you choose to take that, that's where you'll be. You'll be at a barbershop quartet show. Um, all right, so I'm going to pop you both in the green room. Um, so when you come back, they're going to take you to a barbershop quartet show. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Um, I I I know that um, I've, I've I've drug you to so many of, of his performances, but I really feel like this is the night Bobby notices me, and um, <laughs> you know, uh, and I I just need you to be there for support, you know. So thank you. You're welcome again. For for yeah, I can't even tell you how many times we we've, we've been here. Uh, at least this one doesn't have too many strobe lights. That, <laughs> yeah, I did yeah, not appreciate get, that one. I know the EDM night of barbershop was really strange. I understand, but they were just feeling a little like, um, what did Bobby say? Um, uh, eclectic. <laughs> yeah, it, I would call it eclectic for sure. Um, mm -hmm. I just, I wish. I wish Bobby would notice you. Well, I, 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 I'm playing a long game, Claire. Okay. I mean, <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm there for him. I've, I've given, I've, I've always bought his lunch, you know, and this is something that's really important to him that he does after school. And, you know, I just, he's just, uh, he's just so good when he hits those low notes at the end of every song. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, he is, he is a real, he's a very good baritone. I mm -hmm. will admit that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, that's why I've gone to so many of these with you is because overall the quartet's actually really good. I mean, right? I mean, Bobby could be like a famous baritone, like that, like pop of, pop of the jelly guy, right? I mean, all of them together though. Have you ever heard Bobby sing just by himself? Um, no, actually, I haven't. 
Because, I mean, you, you do all these things for him. Mm -hmm. I would think that maybe you've had some a little more one-on-one -on -one time outside oh. of the quartet. I mean, I mean, Bobby and I don't, like, I mean, like, <laughs> like, talk, <laughs> you know? Like, I mean, like, I, 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 just a couple conversations, like, just a, like a little bit. Like, I, well, I, I would say, like, maybe more so I, like, overheard him say, I don't know, I was like, next, you know what I mean? Like, as I'm saying, like, it's, it's going to, it's totally gonna happen. So, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna happen, right? Do I need to say, Kelsey? Do I need to say it because I think you are finally, thank God, coming to the realization that I came to three, uh, three of these ago. Oh my God. Three, you know, you you had this in your head three shows ago. Yeah, but that was the EDM one. So I had a lot of other stuff going on, um, and I didn't really want to bring it up because, um, again, it's I can't lead a horse to water. I can't lead you to the realization or force you to drink. What force force me to drink? Wait, it's the. It, this is also why I didn't bring it up because my communication skills and ability are not as good as Bobby's baritone skills. Oh my God. Who, who have I been surrounding myself with? I can't trust anybody. Wait, hold up. That was mean. I'm sorry. I just, I, I feel very emotional right now. I just, I feel like my whole life has been a lie. Your whole life is revolving around Bobby? Come on, Kelsey, like. Well, I mean, he's he's just, it's always been Bobby, you know? Like, ever since kindergarten, I just, he's just always been just the, the end game, you know? Like, that's all I've ever wanted was a Bobby, and he was a baritone. I mean, how can you say no to a baritone, okay, Claire? How can you say no to that? I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm I'm not into Bobby, so I can say no to a baritone. I like the I like singing the tenor parts in the barbershop quartet, but an octave higher. So, a mezzo. Yeah, I think a mezzo soprano. I can't do the descants. Those are hard. Those, those are, are those are hard. Yeah. Too high. Too high. I just I just haven't ever like pictured a different part, you know? Huh. You know, maybe maybe I should just sing my own part, right? See, it's like reading sheet music for the first time. But you you're on the different um, there's the bass clef, but now you're moving up to the, the other clef. Treble yeah. clef. Now, now I'm in treble. Yeah. Yeah. See, that? See, Kelsey, yeah. now, now you're coming into your own. You know, you don't have to be so reliant on this goal of someone else. Your goal is you. Kelsey, right. your goal is you. You're right. I'm going to I'm going to start my own salon shop quartet. Are you coming with me, Claire? Yes. 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 You already know my part. Yes. We'll we'll work on our own stuff. We don't need Bobby and his and his stupid quartet. I, let's get out of here. The show hasn't started since we got here anyway. No. No. <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing, because who knows what eclectic thing that they're going to do this time, like the other shows. No, I. you're totally right. <laughs> that was such a bad idea. <laughs> thank you. I Thank you for admitting that. I yeah. I do have some ideas. If, if we do want to go into this uh, music together, yes. I do have some ideas. Okay. Okay. So you know how the barber shop has the red and white stripes? 
Yeah. Or tired. Like the, <laughs> we seen it, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking a bold pattern. Okay. Really distinctive so that everyone, they see the pattern, they think whatever the name of our musical group is. Okay. Okay. Well, right? I think I know where you're going with this. Let's say it at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Three, two, one. one. Rainbow Shed Polka Dots. Rhyme. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I, do you? What, uh, I mean, I, I think they're both great choices. I, I mean, if we combine them, it would be very distinctive. Yes. Uh, uh, well, maybe we shouldn't have said that at the same time. Yeah, probably not. That was a bad no. idea. I thought we were on the same page. Uh, <laughs> I mean. At least now we're on the same page about Bobby, about him yeah. not being your goal. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without you, Claire. You're such a great friend. So you trust me again now? Because I still remember you saying that I, you didn't trust me and that was hurtful. And I wanted to go back to that so that we can repair. I, I can totally see that, and I, um, I, I'm. Your feelings are totally valid. Like, I don't want you to think I'm not hearing you. In the moment, I was just distraught, and I wasn't in in control of what I was saying. I've had a lot of growth today, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You you've really gone on an emotional journey. <laughs> I really have. <laughs> and Man. finally remembered what a triple clef was. <laughs> yes. Maybe that's what we should call our, our salon our salon shop quartet. The you know, treble? Trep, you're in treble. Oh, ooh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I hope no one else has taken that. I don't think so. Okay. That's, I mean, like, that's way too clever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, <laughs> let's, let's get out of here. <laughs> but before the lights, before the lights start happening. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I don't want oh. Bobby to see us leave. I mean, that would be really weird. Right. <laughs> Wait, you know what? He wouldn't no. even notice. He wouldn't notice. <laughs> You seem down about that. Come on. No, 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 no. I'm saying. <laughs> you like, <listen. laughs> No, no, no. You're moving on. Your yes, your yes. new goal. Past Bobby. New goal. We're in we're we're in trouble. You're in trouble if you're thinking about Bobby right now. You're so right. <laughs> you're so right. <laughs> Kelsey! <laughs> what? I swear, I swear, I'm over it, I'm over it, I'm over it, I'm over it. You know, I guess I can't expect you to give up something that you've held on to for so long in just the span of a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, but you're right. I mean, he was, he was off, he was, he was really, you know, he's not, he's not, he's not good. He's not great. Wasn't good for me. Wasn't good for, for my future, so. I mean, you bought him lunch and he has never paid you back. We're friends on Venmo and I could tell that he has never Venmoed you. You're right. He never, he never did. He never did. No. And I let that happen. Gosh, I'm such a doormat. <laughs> like I said, you can't lead a horse to water and make them drink. That's the saying that I was trying to get out earlier. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep, I just realized that I insinuated that you were a doormat. I'm sorry. That's In the okay. Spirit of That's okay. That's totally fine. You still trust me? Um, yeah. What what do you ask? Cuz I I think we're going to need more than just us in our salon quartet. Oh yeah. Like so, quartets have four people. Yeah. Do you think we could ask Bobby? 
I'm just kidding. I'm just Oh, fantastic. Obsessed with Bobby. You're obsessed with him. You've got to let it go. You've got to move on. Oh, baritone. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many great moments from that scene. Um, how was it playing together? Uh, talk about that. How was it playing together? It was fun. I mean, it is a, it is an obstacle, like <laughs> the, the virtual. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely different. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Have you done a lot? Have you done a lot of virtual improv or? Um, not too much in like like true improv. Like I've played like werewolf, and that is like you know kind of like a set set of rules, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's not not a lot <laughs> over <laughs> over the pandemic. <laughs> How about you, Kat? I sound I mean, like you have. <laughs> I mean, with the the two MB shows, I've done some, um, and I've tried going to some jams at that people have hosted you know, online, but it's just a very different like energy. And when I'm in Fresno with someone for the first time, you know, doing it in person is a very different feeling. Uh, oh, Cause you yeah. can, you can feel their energy where, you know, virtually there's that additional layer of the camera to sort of, mm -hmm. it, you know, to be honest, it's like, do I look at myself? Do I look at the camera or do I look at yeah. my scene partner <laughs> on the screen? Or do I look at the chat? Or do I look at whatever's <laughs> flying by my window? Or <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have the chat on because that would have been <laughs> like a, probably a bad idea. Yeah, I, I try. I, one thing I learned about this show is I, I would love to put comments up during the scene, but I was I was like, would that distract the improvisers? And it might, because um, then you would see like three of these ago when that was that was when you, I recognize that about three of these ago, which was a great line in the scene. Yeah. Um, then the uh, the it's the treble the baritone clef then the other clef <laughs> just go in the key of you came up um, oh. you're in treble adorable um, <laughs> yes such a fun such a fun scene um, I lo I loved the obvious clear cut we're not over I also enjoyed Tony I felt like and you can tell me if I'm wrong you were trying to edit the scene and end it by leaving were you yeah. trying to do that Yep. He's like, I don't know, how do you, how do you? I, sh I think I forgot to tell you, I'll edit it when it's time. Oh um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't tell okay. you that. No, you mm, didn't. That's on me, that's on me. Um, sorry about I was that. like, do we? I don't know. Oh, I was watching it and I was going, oh, I'm not gonna end it. Like, not yet. <laughs> I'm gonna let this keep going. <laughs> and, it's, and it was, they were natural endings. Like ordinarily, if this were on stage, we probably would have swept, but I was like, nope. <laughs> It was. That was so nice of you, Mike. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> was, you're welcome. Um, uh, I I want to improvise with both of you right now. Um, so it, out there in the chat, how about a couple? Give us some more locations of where the three of us can have a scene, um, and then we, we will improvise a scene in that location. Um, so, Kat, you, you um, this is the part of the show where I normally ask my guests if they have anything that they want to uh, plug or talk about in their lives. Um, so do either of you have anything you'd like to plug or talk about? If you don't, that's fine. I uh, just wanted to throw that at you. So I guess either of you? I'll, I mean, uh, so I'm in Sleepover, which is a 2MB show, uh, the second and fourth Saturdays at 10 p.m. Uh, and I'll actually um, be doing a, a set through Improv MKE, which uh, Michelle Gilliam uh, is the owner of out of virtually based out of Milwaukee at the uh, Everybody Get In Here Festival, which is the first week of uh, June 6th through the 13th. Um, so that'll be fun. Uh, you can see me improvise with some other people uh, as well, outside of the 2MB community. Excellent. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Well, um, I'll be uh, starting to apprentice at Stat Comedy Lab on the weekend shows uh, coming up in June. and. Uh, Mike, I'll see you there. <laughs> Probably. Oh, right? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Fair I might possibly. be there. Um, <laughs> cool. All right. So we've got some locations. Um, we've got a literal peanut gallery, which is fun. Um, I'm going to, what's a, what is a dirigi dirigible? Does anyone know what that is? The, the hot air balloon, but it's the one that you can like be inside the big long one. I'm so impressed you knew what that was. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to look it up online, but I think that's the suggestion I want to take because it sounds fun. <laughs> it can be whatever we want it to be. That's true. 
I'm gonna look up an image of a dirigible. A dirigible. Okay. Oh, like a like a zeppelin. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Here, I'll. I'll Tony's I'll, like, nope. What? I'm gonna. Show, um, I got. I got this. Cat. To yes. Cat totally gets it. Cat totally uh, gets it. Okay, good point. She gets all the points. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Uh, so this is what it is. I'm gonna. Sh I'm just gonna show it real quick. Is it? Why not? There it is. Those are. Dirig dirigible, it, it said Zeppelin, so like those kind of things. Oh, oh Great. wow. Yeah. Very steampunky. Yeah, it is. Yes. Uh, that's what yes. the Grimster said as well. All right. Oh, oh my God, Grimster. Good job, Dad. <laughs> Same person. <laughs> yeah, all right, so we're going to go in a dirigible. I can't even say it right. Dirigible. 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 We'll do a scene in a dirigible. This coffee is so good. Like this is this coffee is awesome. Hmm. I'm starting off my trip with a little something stronger than that. What an excellent day for flying! Right? Yeah. It's so good. It's an excellent day to not die. Oh, what are you going on about there, Courtney? Courtney, you look freaked out. Yes. Do you see that we are above the ground? Yeah. Yes. There are windows. Well, there obviously. Are windows. We're in a dirigible. 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 I know how to pronounce it. Okay. Yeah. That's where we are. We're going to be yeah. fine. The, these things have a pretty good success rate. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Pretty good. Do you have statistics to back that up? I mean, I would say nearly 100% have successfully done their jobs. Yeah, since, more, since, oh, you know, since the big one, you know, the, the Hindenburg, is that what it was? This is not the Hindenburg. This it's is not, not the it's Hindenburg. It's completely different. To Schmisenberg. This is the Schmisenberg. It's very different. Yeah. It's, I it's know named, how to pronounce the Schmisenberg. I like that it's named similar to the Hindenburg, but it's totally not the Hindenburg. It's not. It's so so different. They didn't have coffee on the Hindenburg. You know, they didn't. They didn't serve it. No. <laughs> uh, do you feel better now, Courtney? Have we eased you? Have we eased you now? No, because you're laughing. Ugh. Court. She always does this on uh, when we when we took the paper plane for a drive. She was freaking out about that. Yes, the paper plane is as if it was made of paper. Do you know how untrustworthy paper in the air is? Oh, um, come on. <laughs> I've made a lot of paper airplanes that have gone the distance. Yes. Can you put some statistics behind how far it's gone? My paper airplanes? Yes. Uh Relatively speaking, they've gone m like 100 miles if you count the comparative distance from the origin to where they landed to an actual larger scale paper plane. So, yeah, it was a good, it was good. Mm, these are Colombian and Canadian beans. Damn. Mm. Always like a good blend. They served me my cold brew in a martini glass. I feel so fancy. <laughs> I've already knocked my coffee over, and that's okay. I don't want to drink it anyways because the caffeine is just going to make me more anxious. Courtney, sure. is there anything we can do to like help you right now? Because I see you freaking out. Is there anything we can do? I just, I wanted to try and push my boundaries so that we could spend some more time together away from our earthly and worldly problems. But it's just, give, it's been too much and now we're sort of stuck until we land. And now I feel like I'm just being a burden upon your enjoyment of this Colombian and Canadian coffee. Mm, a little bit. Look, Courtney, it's, you're, with, you're with Trent and you're with Miss Heatherpenny. We're your best friends, Trent and Mrs. Heatherpenny. I know We're how to pronounce Miss Heatherpenny. I, 
I know you know how to pronounce it. I was just I was just reiterating that you've got the two your two best friends in the world, Trent and Miss Heather Penny, here with you doing this. Mm -hmm. This doesn't even need creamer. It's like insane. <laughs> right? It's so good. It's just Miss Heather Penny, ever, ever ever since you you took that new position, you've been I feel like you've been more like aloof. You know, you my everything's in a martini glass. You you put your pinky up when when you use a fork. I didn't even know people did that. I have noticed <laughs> that too, actually. Well, I I just entered a new section of my life. I'm I'm moving on up, as they say. So, you know what? I can't enjoy myself. I can't put on airs. Well, you can enjoy yourself, but putting mm -hmm. on airs has a means you don't have time for your best friends anymore. I'm here, aren't I? Aren't I in this dirigible with you? Dirigible. 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 Who's to say? I don't know. Anyone can pronounce it. <laughs> Dirigible. Courtney, please. You're such a buzzkill. Hey. Hey. Is Trent? The... Yeah. What are you... I'm looking out the window. I'm trying not to, but should I? Um. Well, the horizon... Is vertical? I don't think it's supposed to be. Oh my God. Yeah, it is. Huh. Maybe this is a new thing that the dirigible does, is a vertical landing. Like a rocket ship, how fun. I gotta, Courtney, Courtney, hey. Courtney, look at this. No! We, we're not, no, no, look at look at my coffee. Look at my coffee. Okay. The horizon is vertical, but my coffee is still in my cup. That means that we're safe. Gravity? <laughs> yeah, there's it, somehow it fools of us all sometimes. Oh my goodness. I I, I really don't understand that there's definitely at least a 90 degree difference in angles between what is outside and what is inside. Mm. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's because of who the captain of this dirigible is. Must be a very skilled pilot. His name is Schrodinger. Schrodinger. Yep. Am I supposed to trust Sch Schrodinger? Do you know something about Schrodinger that I don't? Because I'm still a little afraid of the fact that what it is supposed to be the horizon and horizontal is now not. Look, we're inside Schrodinger's dir dirigible now, which means we are both simultaneously vertical and horizontal. Wow, what a conundrum. A delightful one at that. I'm enjoying myself. I'm still not. E even though I, I enjoy both of you as friends, I the situation is just oh, too much. Courtney, look at your pinky. <gasps> it's separated from my other fingers like yes it's it's like spock from star trek but with the pinky finger uh, look look at this i wonder if this cat belongs to somebody on this dirigible <laughs> the captain schrodinger oh, how delightful Good job, Katie. That was so good. She did it that, improv all her own. 
she heard Schrodinger and she was like, I'm gonna be needed in this scene. <laughs> Oh that uh, I oh that was so much fun. Yeah, the perfect moment of that cat walking in. <laughs> um this did get weird and I also liked it. I enjoy I enjoy some weird scenes. Um oh <laughs> this is Amy Claire Parker. Uh Horizon Horizontal. I didn't know that either until you put it in the chat. <laughs> that did not dawn on me until that moment. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also um, a children's series, a children's novel series called Trent and Miss Heather Penny. <laughs> we would like, no, we should make one. Yeah. That's what we're saying. Yeah. It's your oh, duo oh, okay. name. I was like, did you just make up his name that it was a novel? Oh no, no, God. no. That would be th thievery. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tony and Kat, thank you so much for being a part of this show. Um, you have you are both delightful delightful people and delightful improvisers. Um, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Yeah, I was so honored when you invited me to come on the final show. Uh, I was very excited, and Tony, it was so wonderful to meet you and play with you. And I will have to come visit Orlando uh, and brave the humidity and the heat uh, yeah. to see Sac. You both of you at Sac and uh, the theme parks. Absolutely. Right back at you. It was a joy playing with you, too. I got to catch some of these shows you're streaming. They sound awesome. They're right here on 2MB Studios, which is definitely a great place uh, to not only watch shows, but it's been a great it's been a great honor of mine uh, to do this show. Uh, we started the show back in September um, and I was trying to total up the amount of improvisers that I've had on the show. Um, it's over, I think it's well over 40 or 50 improvisers have come together for the most part, having never met together, never met and then playing on this, on this virtual stage. Uh, and it's been such a joy to watch that over the past several months. And, um, yeah, all, uh, this was, th this is the final episode of the show. Uh, for now it may come back at some time down the road, but for now, uh, we're going to say thank you so much to, for the, for the opportunity to 2MB studios, uh, the people who run that channel, uh, Rachel, Matt and Ben, fantastic human beings. Uh, so please support this channel in every way you can. Keep coming back and watching shows. Um, and yeah, everyone out there, I guess this is it. Thank you for coming. <laughs>